Hello, my name is Edmond Gamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, to this episode's lecture on realized profits. Now, as we already know, trading can and may transpire between parties in a group. Now, the transaction involved may be done at a profit, so a parent may sell to its subsidiaries at a margin or a markup. Now, the notion underpinning group account is that entities involved are treated as though they are one. Therefore, one cannot yield a profit by selling to itself. So, realized profit is the one which is made between parties of a group and therefore must be eliminated so any profit that is made outside a group is realized so unrealized profits relate to transactions involving one inventory and non-current assets okay so we'll not deal with the inventory and tackle the non-current assets later so if an entity say the parent sells goods to a subsidiary the transaction amount will be a selling price to the parent who is the seller and at the same time be a cost to the buyer who is the subsidiary in the example however ias2 inventory requires inventory to be recognized at the lower of cost and net realizable value so the net realizable value is the selling price less than any cost to sell so it's literally the same as the selling price which the parent or the seller holds okay therefore the Profit on the unsold inventory at the date of consolidation will be considered unrealized profit and must be eliminated. When that is done, the inventory held in the buyer's book, which he or she will present at point of consolidation, will be reduced to the cost and align with the principles of IAS2. Let's look at the calculation of unrealized profit relating to inventory. Okay. So first, you must identify the amount of unsold goods. Okay. Then secondly, you estimate the profit element on it. So here you must carefully analyze if the profit that is quoted is a markup or a margin and whether the cost or the selling price is what is provided to do the dynamics okay so if you're having difficulty with that kindly click on the link provided above to be connected to a lecture addressing margins and markup comprehensively once that is done we have to recognize the unrealized profit so the retained earnings of the seller will be reduced by the unrealized profit then the inventory of the buyer will also go down with the unrealized profit amount. Let's test our understanding. During the year 2, December 2015, Papa, represented by P, sold goods to Stella, represented by S, a subsidiary for $100,000. So P sells to S at a cost plus of 25%, which is the markup. So S had not sold any of the goods. So we had to calculate the unrealized profit for the consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2015. So by solution, the unsold inventory is hundred thousand dollars then the unrealized profit will be twenty thousand dollars which is the 25 over 125 because the selling price on the markup was provided then we multiply by the hundred thousand which is the amount of the unsold goods so when we're recognizing we reduce the retained earnings for papa because he's the seller for twenty thousand dollars then we reduce the inventory of stella because she's the buyer for twenty thousand dollars Another test of our understanding. Selom S owns 70% of the shares of Phyllis P. Selom buys goods for $4,000 and sells it to Phyllis for $6,000. Phyllis then sells a quarter of the goods for $1,500. So what is the unrealized profit? So by way of solution, the profit on sale will be $2,000, which will be the $6,000 sales price less the $4,000 cost. Okay, so for the portion unsold, it will be three quarters because the question said Phyllis has sold quarter out for thousand five hundred dollars. That one will be relevant because that was sold out of the group. The profit on that will be the realized profit. So the realized profit will be thousand five hundred dollars, which will be a three quarters of the two thousand profit unsold. So when we are recognizing it, we will reduce retained earnings of seller because he's the seller. Then we reduce the inventory for Phyllis because she's the buyer for thousand five hundred dollars. Let's test our understanding for the last time. Kofi sells goods worth $10,000 to its subsidiary, Baba, at a 50% markup. Baba still has 40% of the goods in inventory. So what is the unrealized profit? So here, 
when we find the profit on sale, it will be five thousand dollars. Now the cost was provided, and we're giving a markup, so we just find fifty percent of the cost. Then the portion on sold is forty percent. The unrealized profit will be two thousand, which is the forty percent of the total profit on sale. So we'll reduce the written earnings of Kofi. Then we'll reduce the inventory of Baba on current assets. If an entity transfers or sells an current asset to another within the group structure. The transaction amount will be a selling price which is a current value plus the profit to the seller. The same amount will be the cost price to the buyer. However, IAS system, property planted equipment states a non-current asset is to be recognized at its current value. So the profit on the remainder of the useful life of the non-current asset is the unrealized profit and thus must be eliminated. Let's look at the calculation of unrealized profit relating to non-current assets. So first, the current value of the non-current asset at the reporting date, that is after the sale, that is how the new owner will have carried it at the point. Then we bless it with the current value if the sale had not taken place, then the difference will give unrealized profit. Alternatively, you can calculate the profit on disposal, then you less it with accumulated depreciation post-sale. So you depreciate the profit on disposal, then the current value will be the unrealized profit. So upon consolidation, the retained earnings of the seller must be reduced. Then we do same with the non-current assets of the buyer. So let's quickly test our understanding. So Casing Limited K sold plant for $300,000 to its subsidiary Telma Co. T on 1st January 2020. The plant was purchased at $500,000 on 1st January 2015. Depreciation for the group is 10% straight line, meaning that the number of, of useful years for the plant is 10 years, 100 divided by 10. Okay. So calculate the unrealized profit for the consolidated statement of financial position at 31st December 2020. So for the solution, the current value of Telma, that's the new owner, is $240,000, which is the $300,000 less accumulated depreciation of $60,000. It's only been one year since she bought the asset. So since the asset original useful life was 10 years and it has been used for five years Thelma will have to depreciate the plant for five years so a depreciation for the one year will be one over five times the three hundred thousand, which is the sixty thousand. so the current value without casing selling it would have been two hundred thousand till date which will be the five hundred thousand original cost less three hundred thousand, which is the accumulated depreciation the accumulated depreciation will be the five hundred thousand times the annual depreciation of ten percent times the six years he used it five years before selling it. If he didn't sell it, he would have used it for another year. The difference will give an unrealized profit of $40,000. Okay. Alternatively, you can find a profit on disposal, then you find the current value of it and consider it unrealized profit. Current value is the original cost less accumulated depreciation. So the original cost is $500,000. The accumulated depreciation is $250,000, which is the $500,000 times the 10% times five years 2015 to the beginning of 2020 is five years so the current value will give two hundred fifty thousand dollars then we find the profit on disposal which will be fifty thousand dollars the three hundred thousand dollars that is the selling price less the current value of two fifty thousand dollars so the accumulated depreciation on the profit on disposal is ten thousand dollars that is the year that the buyer has used it so we depreciate the Profit on disposal by one over five. The difference will be forty thousand dollars. Let's test our understanding again. I sold the machine with a netbook value of fifty thousand dollars to its parent H at a transfer price of seventy thousand dollars on first January twenty twenty. Group policy detects that the machine is depreciated over its remaining useful life of five years. So we have to calculate the unrealized profit for the year end thirty first December twenty twenty. So for solution, netbook value after disposal will be fifty six thousand. That will be the purchase price times the unused period. The useful life is five years. One year has already been spent, so it will be four years left. So the netbook value without disposal would have been forty thousand, okay, which will be the original cost of fifty thousand times the unused period, which is four over five, leading to an unrealized profit of sixteen thousand dollars. So here, what you do is that you reduce the retained earnings of S, who is the seller, then you reduce the non-current asset of H, who is the buyer. Let's finally test our understanding. So Case acquired 100% of the share capital of Zira on its incorporation dates. So the statement of financial position of the two entities as at 31st December 2017 are as follows. Non-current assets for both are listed here. Investment in Z at cost is also listed here. 
then inventory, other current assets. Then we have the total asset column. You have the share capital for both, retain earnings for both, current liabilities for both. Then we have the total equity and liability section. During December 2017, Z had sold goods to K for $120,000. Z sells to K at a cost plus of 20%, which is a markup. So K had only sold half of these goods. K sells an equipment with a current value of 9000 to Z for $12,000 at the beginning of the year. So the equipment has a remaining useful life of three years and it is to be depreciated as so. So we have to prepare the consolidated statement of financial prestation at 31st December 2017. So for solution, so for the consolidated statement of financial prestation as at 31st December 2017, We'll have non-current asset, which is the fifty thousand for the parent, twenty-five thousand for the subsidiary. Then we list the unrealized profit in relation to the non-current assets from the subsidiary's non-current asset because she is the buyer, leading to seventy-three thousand dollars for inventory. We pick that of the parent. Then we list the unrealized profit from hers because she is the buyer. Then we add that of the subsidiary, giving twenty thousand dollars for other current assets. We add that of the parent and the subsidiary. Giving twenty six thousand dollars, so the total assets it will be one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars. For share capital, we only pick that of the parent as usual. Then for retained earnings, we pick the thirty thousand from the parent. We less the two thousand realized profits from the sale of the non current asset because he sold it. Then we add the retained earnings of the subsidiary. Then we less the unrealized profit relating to the goose leading to thirty eight thousand dollars. We'll show all the workings very soon, please. So current liabilities, we add that for the parent and the subsidiary. Then the total will be $119,000. When we come to the workings, with the unrealized profits relating to the inventory, the amount was $10,000. Because the markup was 20% and the selling price was made available, it will be 20 over 120 times half of the goods. Half of the goods were in custody, which is $60,000. For the unrealized profits relating to the equipment, it is $2,000. It will be the netbook value post disposal, which is $8,000, which is the $12,000 of the purchase price, multiplied by the remainder of the useful life, which is the two out of the three years. Then we less it with the netbook value without disposal, which will give $6,000, which is the netbook value at the beginning of the year times the remaining useful life. So the difference will give $2,000. Okay, people, this is where we bring our discussion to a close. I hope it went well. If you have any comment or feedback for us, do well to drop them in the comment section below and it will be timely and adequately addressed. Whilst at that, kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications. Also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. Catch us again on another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Till then, take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.